Hi there. You're looking at a Lego pendulum clock. It's been running continuously for about a year now. Uh, the reason I'm making this video today is um, while it ran pretty reliably for quite a while, um, it's been starting to stop every now and then more recently. And what I think is going on is some of the plastic parts are wearing away and not functioning the way they used to. Uh, so I'm going to take it apart and show you what's inside and see what we find. Before I do that, I'll show you some interesting parts of the clock. Here's a closer look at the escapement. If you can see on that far pallet, there's quite an accumulation of gray plastic dust, or at least that's what I think it is. Um, so I'm gonna, that's what I want to see if there's more inside. Here's the clock face. Set the time, you just move the hands. Here's the pendulum and the weight. The knob on the pendulum allows you to move the weight up and down precisely, which controls the rate at which the clock runs. To rewind it, you can just pick up the weight. And it's now ready to run for another three days or so. Uh, but right now I'm just going to take it down and show you what's inside. All right, I've taken the clock down off the wall. Before I take it apart, I thought I'd give you a closer look at how this works. So right now I'm just spinning the main drive wheel. Without the pendulum installed to regulate the escapement, the clock just moves forward at an uncontrolled rate. This shows how the rewinding mechanism works. You can see that when I spin the drive wheel in reverse, this free wheel disengages, which allows the chain to be moved backwards. But when I spin it forwards, it re-engages and drives the clock forwards. So before even really taking the clock apart, I found two pretty interesting bits of wear. The escapement pallet here has a really pretty deep groove that's been dug by the escapement wheel teeth. Here's the other pallet. I haven't wiped the dust off of this one yet. This one too has some pretty, this one isn't a groove inside. It's just the edge of it has been worn off. So the other place I expected to find some wear was on this edge where the pendulum rests. Um, but I can't actually feel any wear at all there. As you can see, I've got the clock mostly apart. There's some interesting wear here on this part. You can see there's quite a bit of plastic dust here. That seems like it corresponds to this axle. Seems mostly fine. The scale wheel also has a, a line of plastic dust on it. It looks like it's kind of where it, the edge of the escapement pallet hits. So these other two wheels and axles. Don't really see any problems with these. Let's take this thing apart a little bit further. So this is where the main drive wheel rests. This is where this has the most weight on it. And I actually don't see any signs of wear at all there. This is another place where I expected to see some issues. So this is interesting. There's quite a bit of 
dust here. Oh, this part seems to have broken at some point. It's, it has no sticking power at all. You can see that there's quite a lot of dust there. So this bushing that was on the freewheel axle, it was next to this part here. I only noticed later, it's almost completely disintegrated. It's been broken in, I think, four different places. There's one, and then, yeah, there too. So this is really weird. I don't know how this part broke like this. This part was assembled like this and the bushing was right here. Doesn't seem like it should be experiencing force that would break it like that. But it would also explain where all this dust on this part came from. So the freewheel axle is pretty interesting. It passes through three beams. This third beam, there's not really any sign of wear at all on this one. Uh, but the, the freewheel axle is not a solid axle all the way through. So when it's constructed, it looks something like this. And as you can see, like this in the middle, you know, it's just got this little plastic piece supporting it. So on this side, there's a beam that passes through here. And there's basically only one, this axle is only passing through that one beam in this, this loose part. So I suspect that's why there's been so much wear on that beam. Overall, I'm pretty impressed with the durability of these Legos. So I'm fairly surprised by this. I expected the most wear possibly to be on this part, which is the main drive wheel, which it doesn't spin all, you know, as many times as the other parts, but it experiences a lot of force. There's quite a bit of weight on this, on this clock. And then as you move through the drivetrain, the torque gets lower and the number of uh, rep revolutions gets higher. Um, so to be specific, this part spins 1260 times in a year. And then as you move through the clock, you know, for example, the freewheel spins, uh, 6,300 times in a year. And then the escapement wheel, where is that? Right here, spins, uh, 788,000 times. And then these pallets have, you know, bumped into the escapement wheel teeth um, 31.5 million times in the last year. So it took 31.5 million impacts to generate this little groove. Overall, I had kind of expected that I was just going to find where all over the place. And I had kind of planned on reducing the gear ratio so the clock would only run for two days instead of three. Uh, and that would let me reduce the weight and maybe it wouldn't wear out as fast. Uh, but after seeing this, I think all I'm going to do is replace the escapement pallets, maybe think about the, the freewheel design a little bit, and rebuild it pretty much as it was. So anyways, I think that's the end of the video. I hope you found it interesting. I'm going to turn off the camera and try to put this thing back together.